welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, Jim's wife, and we've got a busy stretch coming up here. The weather is finally clearing up and things are drying out, and we talked about it last night. Jim thinks he can start plowing either today or tomorrow. Um, and we just have a lot of things going on all at the same time, and we wanted to share them with you and hope that you can enjoy what we're doing here. This morning, Jim is going to go up first thing while it's still drying and warming up and get a load of logs up at the land that we have up the road. And he's going to take the horses with them. He's hitching them up right now, but I just wanted to show you that over the last few days, he has been doing some logging and bringing loads home with the horses. Here's some that he's got piled up. Here they come, getting ready to get hitched up. He's been using the Belgians a lot. The Percherons and the Colts have been going out to the pasture, but I told Buck this morning, you look pretty happy to go outside, but your time's coming, plowing's coming. So um, he will be hitching them all up together to plow very, very soon. So he's got some logs here. This is a load he brought home the other day. And uh, we're starting to saw for the little uh, lumber market we have, as well as all the farm work. And here's Whitey. And I wanted to share with you that um, Whitey lost her kittens the other day. All of them, it was tragic. Abby and I went up to see them about the time the YouTube video aired and every last one of them was dead. They had been bitten and there were there not one of them was alive. Jim and I have had seen the um, father of the cats around and he hasn't been around and we think he came in and did that. We talked to some other people who said that happens sometimes and there Jim goes. He's going up to the log job right now. They'll trot up the road and he also said he has a little bit of cutting to do. But back to the kittens. Um, we were so sad, so disheartened, especially since the grandkids were looking forward to getting one of them. Um, so anyways, we did bury him over here by the by the barn. I put a little rock here and I'm gonna put some more, a little bit more of a monument there for the little kitties. So sad, but such as life on the farm, sometimes things happen. There they go. We had another little mishap here on the farm and I wanted to show you that. So this is our little mishap. We've got the corn crib where we kept our corn that we grew last year on its side. We had some pretty severe winds and the corn crib's almost empty and the corn crib tipped over. So it's not a big deal, but Jim's gonna have to figure out how to get it right it up and whether it's still salvageable. It was second hand to us, so um, we'll see what how it, how it does. Anyways, as you can see, Whitey's here with me. She's been following me all around. She's taking it and pretty much in stride her loss, but she is nonetheless, I'm sure, very sad. So here it is on its side. There's the bottom. And here's the top. And there's a little bit of corn left in there. So, just one more thing that needs to be done. My job this morning while Jim's up is getting a load of logs, is to 
head around the fence down the road one last time before we put the heifers out or the young cattle not all heifers but before we put them out um, just to make sure the fence is good and hot and there's no way for them to get out of the fence they were in there last year so they at least are familiar with the fence but it always is a good start to have a good good fence so that's what I'm off doing this morning when Jim gets back from his with his load of logs We'll go and get the heifers out. So we're getting ready to get the cattle loaded up. Kim's hooked up the trailer. He's backing it in so that, and it's right at the entrance of the horse barn so that we can hopefully get the cattle right in. Okay, get around. Come on. Come on. to get them off the trailer, that's for sure. So yesterday we got a bunch of stuff done. We got the cows out, that's what you saw last, and I actually spread a bunch of manure, clean my horse barn out. Where I was spreading is in my cornfield, which is where I want to plow first. And I was hoping to start plowing even today a little bit. Well, last night didn't we get a bunch of rain? So that uh, answers that question, I better stay off. Um, but we needed to get the plow hitched up. But before we do, I want to explain a few things and I'm going to bring the horses out here and get them hitched up and then we'll get the plow um, that I want to use in the corn ground ready to go. So we have Ken out here. Ken is my middle horse. So I'll have Lady on this side and I'll have Buck on that side for, for today set, setting up. Uh, I will rotate the horses around. But those are three that actually work the best plowing. So those are the three I want to start with because starting a field is the most crucial to have your best horses. So the way I hitch lions on three horses, you, you with, I've shown you before how you hitch the lions on two horses. So with three horses, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, the way I've always done it for years, and I probably like the best, is I'll have Lady standing here, and she'll get her outside line will be hitched up. Ken's team lines will not be used at all. These can come right off, and sometimes I take them right off just to get them out of the way. But as you can see, I have this short strap right here. It's about three feet long, and I have one on both sides of, of Ken, and I hitch it to the lower part of the hames. Some people actually hitch it hot, one of these other rings, but I prefer it right down here. So this strap here will go onto Lady's inside bit. Her line will go onto her outside bit, and her, sh her line that would go for the team line would continue through and hitch onto Ken just like it normally would be if the two of them were together. It'd be the same side, same way on the other side. This, sh this short line will go to Buck's inside bit, his outside line will go to his bit, and the other line will come to Ken. That way I have control of all three horses. But another way that works, and I actually a few years ago uh, bought another strap, another line that goes, hitches right onto the team lines and actually goes to the third horse so that you have actually more direct control on every single horse. And that works okay, but I almost like prefer these right <laughs> at the moment anyways, because uh, if you've got a horse that's kind of aggressive, and I do have, when I'm using Buck, he's kind of aggressive, and when I use Bill, he's kind of aggressive. This allows that horse to um, only pull so far, and then beyond that, he is pulling on 
tens harness and can. Um, they're not, it's easier on my arms. You don't have to continually pull when you get a horse that pulls hard. And so I prefer right at the moment just using these straps. So we'll get these horses hitched up and see how it goes. Yes, student. I was wondering if you've ever noticed if the horses mind it, if the one's pulling ahead, like does it bother them? Can you notice it? Without this or with this? With that. Oh no, because all they're doing is just helping them along. So it wouldn't affect that horse at all. Pulls are... No, because they're all working, they're pulling. It's just he's faster and it just, no, I don't think it bothers them all. Okay. So. Okay, let me get Lady, I'll get her hitched up and buck, and then we will go work on the plow. Okay, so here we have Lady. I'm going to hit your chuck rein. And this is her long outside line. So this comes through and hitches to her bit. Then over here, her inside line that would, goes to the horse beside her, hitches to Ken. And then the short strap I usually put it underneath. If you don't put it underneath, it will, it's, it's actually got to be underneath because it's so low. So that's how it's set up. Just like that. That's just extra stuff here. Just like that. That keeps Lady from walking too far ahead of, the, of Ken. Ken is kind of the, whoever's in the center is kind of the control horse. The horses have to walk kind of his speed. Ken's a mediocre fast walker. Sometimes he walks quite slow, but usually when he's working, he walks good pace. So I'm happy with having him in the center. So now I'll get Buck and put him in. Oh, lady, get a little bit. Get a little bit. Get her, Ken. Get her, get her, get her. I mean, oh. So short line will go right to Ken's bit. And this other line will come right, I mean, to, that goes to Buck's bit, sorry. And the other line will come over here to Ken's bit. Kind of a tight fit in here, but they're very good. So I'll hitch up Buck's check rein. Now they're all ready to go. So let's go get the plow ready. And we need to do some adjusting there before we can even start plowing. So let's do that. Okay, so here is my cart, same cart I use for a single horse, sometimes with a team. It's also a cart I use for three horses. So now I have the shafts on it still, so I have to pull the shafts out. So it's a simple matter of pulling this pin. Pulling that pin like that, and these will slide it out. Just as simple as that. So I'm gonna put this pin back in because the hole that I will be using, actually I'm gonna put it in here because I don't need it. When I, this is the hole I would use for a, a team and that doesn't need a pin the way I do it. And that's the hole I'm gonna use for three horses. And there again, that does not need a pin either. So we'll get the shafts out of the way and we'll put the other one in. So now with my three horse tongue, I'll slide it right into this outside hole. And if need be, I will use a short block. And I do not have one in there, but I'm thinking this might be the right length pole. The last time I used this pole was last fall when I was picking corn and I had it on the, my motorized cart. So the length could be a little different. So all I can do is try it, hitch them up and see if I need to adjust the length. Uh, I hope I don't have to cut it off. I hope it's not too long because it was working good for that cart and it should be able to work for both carts. But if it's too short, I can throw in a six or eight inch block and it'll, it'll stretch it out. Amazing that you it's amazing something that's the right diameter. It's not. Yeah. It's oh. not. Okay, I started pushing it in and it bound up on me because see how that little crook is right there? Yeah. So I'm going to have to take my chainsaw and actually cut that crook out so it will slide in because it needs to slide all the way back to there. So I just had to, to uh, 
take a little bit off that corner and then it slid right in. We don't know on the length whether it's going to be the right length, but we have to put the whip, the evener on now. So this is a three horse evener. I have a lot of adjustments on this evener in case I want to adjust for any particular horse. It makes it really nice. And also when you're using a three horse evener, a three horse cart like this, um, because that tongue, this pole, just slides into that piece of pipe, there's nothing from sliding it out. Uh, and also just for safety reasons, because if the horse that's not hitched doesn't have a neck on, if he was to slack off, it'd be easy if this was a slip-on neck yoke for it to come right off the pole. So because of that, when I'm using this setup, I always have a use this with a bolt through there. I don't really like it, but it works okay. But it's very important, crucial actually, that your neck yoke is secured to that pole when you're using three horses, because only two of those horses are hitched to the neck yoke. The third one is not. So if he slacks, everything goes loose up front. So now we're ready to hitch onto this with the horses to see if I have the right length. So I wanted to show you one thing though. This is a plow I've decided I'm gonna use in my corn ground for this year. This plow has a bit of a history. Um, before I explain the history, let me show you even the plow, the brand new plow I bought, what was it, two years ago? At least two. I think two years ago, let me show you that. So this is my brand new white horse plow. I've had this for I think two years now. And I thought after I get this, I would never go back to my old plow. But there's a reason for that I wanna go back to my old plow and I'll explain it as we go along. Um, but this has been a great plow, but uh, it's just not the right plow for this situation. And I'll explain that. Okay, so this plow is the plow I'm gonna use. This is a plow I've had for probably, I don't know, 25 years. And it was old as can be when I bought it. I bought this plow out of Canada. Now this is a very common, originally a two bottom tractor plow. Originally, there was another plow that went right onto here. So there was two plows, that one and this one. And it is, if I recall correctly, I don't know if there's a name on it or not, but it was a Massey Harris plow. Massey Harris is a pretty common plow in Canada. They make beautiful plowing. They're, they're, they do great at plowing. The mold board was a Massey Harris plow. Originally, when I got this plow, we cut the plow off. I can't remember exactly how we did do it. I think we, I don't know, but there, there was, after I cut the, the second plow off, there was still a wheel here that rolled in the furrow. And I don't know if it was connected to here or what it was, I can't remember. But anyways, for some reason, later on, I cut that off. I wish I hadn't. The wheel was actually better, but it still works fine the way it is. I also had difficulty finding plow points for that Massey Harris plow, and was, they were actually very expensive. So I chose to end up, I ended up putting a John Deere plow on. So this is a John Deere 14 inch plow. And it works great. It's just that the Massey had a lot more of a roll to the plow. So it kind of rolled over so nice. This is made to more of an abrupt turn to break up the soil more. Um, so this works great, has worked great, and I've used it for years. The reason I'm going to use it now in this corn ground is when you pick corn, you go round and round the field to pick the corn. And in the process, you're knocking these corn stalks over. Now, sometimes in the fall, when you're done picking corn, there's a lot of things you could do. You could go through the disc harrow and break up these stalks. You could go through and actually chop them up and bale them up for, for bedding. Um, there's, there's things you can do to get rid of these stalks. But most of the time, and most people will just plow the stalks under. Well, if you think about it, when you're plowing stalks that are rolled one way, it's a lot easier to roll that right under at the same way they have already been knocked over from the corn planter. And I'll explain this better when I get to plowing. But so this plow here actually works better, but because I'm using this plow, I'm going to have a dead furrow and which I'm trying to avoid. That's one reason why I bought the other the, yeah, the plow. Yes. What is a dead furrow? A dead furrow is, uh, if you're, if you're plowing your field and throwing your 
your ground outward, when you get to the center, you end up with a big furrow here that's difficult to fill back in. Um, the way I'm going to plow, I'm going to start in the center and plow both ways. So I'll be plowing it like this. So I'll have a bit of a hump. That's pretty easy to smooth out. And then when you get to the ends, you'll just have one furrow. It won't be so big. And so it's easier to smooth out. But the main reason for doing it is to plow the same way I picked. So I'm rolling that corn stalks under the same way it was picked, which ends up doing a nicer job. So that's why I'm using this plow. Uh, there's other issues too, but I'll talk about in other videos. I have so much wanted to plow today, but I'm just going to force myself to stay out of the fields. So, but I do, I'm glad I'm getting this done. I'm going to be ready to go when the time is right. So let's hitch the horses up and make sure that the pole is the right length for this operation. And then when the time comes, hopefully within a, within a day or two, I can start plowing. Cut stuff. Cut stuff. So I need to cross two horses over that pole to be set up the way I want to be set up, which is generally not a problem. Capital G. Yep, G. Yep, bye. G or buck. Oh. Bye. Bye. Oh. Okay, that went well, so we'll hitch the neck yoke up. So I'm somewhat totally guessing as to what length I want this on. I'm hoping oh, to have either the, somewhere around the sixth length from the back, two, four, six. But there again, totally guessing. Two, four, six. Up late. Up, lady. Two, four, six. You can never totally tell for sure until you actually drive them around, around a little bit. So I'll hitch up Buck's last tug. That Buck. Six. Okay, now the evener's good and straight across like that. And the tongue is at the height I'd want. Oh, bye. So I think back up here. Yeah. I think they go run me into the barn. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh, okay. So what happens with your third horse is he kind of has somewhat control of how things go, even though he's tied off to Ken. But if he was to walk too far ahead, you'll see that tongue will go right up in the air. I don't know if you saw that, back up. If he backs off, See how the tongue drops? Seeing that? Mm -hmm. Come here, Oh, lady. Oh. So what happens if I hitch up and it's too tight? The tongue is going to go too high. So I'll just swing, make a loop around the driveway and make sure it's adjusted right. I might have to go down to the seventh link instead of the six. Step up. Ha. Ipa, ha, ipa, ha, 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 This is, of course, is the first time they've been hitched up, three of them, since corn picking time. So it's, it's a little bit hard to tell, but you've got to see where lady's at and if she's slacking, like right there, you can't go by that. You gotta go by where she's normally would be at a walking pace with the rest of them. Careful, careful, careful. As we come to the 
to the trunk body she wants to run in because she thinks she's all done work of course and that's where that other strap really works to hold her back oh so i think we got it right on the money so if you can give me a hand we'll pull this plow to the cart okay so this I have to have a plow clevis to make this work. So that's what that is, it's a twisted clevis. I'm gonna drop the pin in. Now, because I know, and I've used this so much, I know this has to be on that hole there, not the center hole. When it's on the center hole, it tends to not stay in the furrow quite like it is, like it, like it should be. Um, this also gives them a tiny little bit of side draft, but when you're dealing with three horses on a plow, you will always have a side draft, some side draft, no matter how you do it. So this is the rope that actually lifts the plow up and down. And when we get to plowing, I'll show you how that works. I think this is all we're gonna do for today. Even though I really wanted to go try, try out that first furrow, but I'm gonna contain myself and not do it. And I'm gonna put these horses away. I might still be doing some other work with them later on this afternoon. But for right now, we got what done I wanted to do and I'm glad and I'm happy that we're ready to go. So we'll see you next time and we might be plowing by then. Have a good day.